Hi friends, now in today's episode of Dams Unplugged, where we try to look at a disease in an integrated fashion, we have selected a infection which is particularly common in Southern America and Central America and because of the peculiar nature, geographic nature, distribution of this disease, it is a hot favorite if you are appearing for your USMLE exams or Although it is not so common in India, but it is still, uh, you know, a hot favorite with the examiners. So I am sure you will enjoy the discussion of this infection, which has a multi-system implications. And we will look at the disease from its microbiological aspect, as well as from the imaging aspect. Let's start with the history of the patient. This is a 55-year-old male. He is from Brazil. So the important clue in the history itself is the uh, you know geographic location of the patient is he's from Brazil with on and off shortness of breath regurgitation since a month so he has a one month history of shortness of breath and regurgitation when we take history of this patient he says he had swelling of one of his eye when he was 38 year old so today he's 55 year old around 20 years back he had swelling of the left eye at that time his blood reports were showing Tripomastigotes of the uh, Trypanosoma cruzi, which were identified when he presented with the swollen eye. And in view of his present complaint, a series of tests were done in which you know you had some abnormalities in a X-ray chest, MRI of the heart, and the uh, Trypanosoma cruzi IgG antibodies in this serum. So uh, let's you know you have an overview now. You know we are talking of uh, a, a infection which is more common in Brazil in the uh, in the Southern America. So let's look at the disease and the imaging. So the first abnormality that we saw in the radiology in this patient it was the chest X-ray, which shows a grossly enlarged heart. And we know today in the chronic stages of uh, Trypanosoma cruzi infection, which is also called as Chagas disease, you have uh, you know a dilated cardiomyopathy-like picture, which would show an enlarged heart or a cardiomegaly on an X-ray. For the beginners listening to us, you just need to see the thoracic diameter and roughly estimate the diameter of the heart. If you feel that the cardiac diameter is occupying more than half of the thoracic diameter, it is enlarged. This is a grossly enlarged heart on an X-ray chest. And why why did this patient has regurgitation? Because this this disease is also associated with mega esophagus, and you can see this is the barium swallow picture of the patient where you can see a grossly dilated esophagus. You can see the esophagus has barium with some food residues forming a air fluid level, and this is a grossly dilated esophagus. And the you know immediately in your mind you start recollecting how a barium image of ecclesia looks like. So the barium picture in Chagas disease is almost indistinguishable from Echelasia cardia. So this is how it looks like. And you know, this is one of the differential diagnoses to be considered for Chagas disease and Echelasia cardia. We always keep in mind when you're looking at the imaging finding in a typical demography. But the important thing I want to point out with the today's unplugged is the role of cardiac MR. Now the cardiac MRI today, especially with looking at delayed myocardial enhancement after giving gadolinium, is able to quantify the amount of fibrosis that there is in the myocardium. So this disease would begin in the heart as myocarditis, then there will be a latent phase in which gradually the myocardium fibrils will be replaced by fibrous tissue. And that is shown by MRI as late gadolinium enhancement. For example, in this image that I am showing you, this is a contrast enhanced MRI. You can see late gadolinium enhancement in the left ventricular wall involving the entire wall. So we say transmural enhancement along with mid wall enhancement in the septum. This is late gadolinium enhancement. And, and just to give you an idea that, you know, late gadolinium enhancement is also seen in ischemic causes. So, but when we look at coronary angiogram of this patient, it looks normal. So the coronary arteries are normal. But there is late gadolinium enhancement in the myocardial. So on cardiac MRI, delayed enhancement has been reported in the left ventricular wall in both in CAD and non-CAD distributions. And this delayed enhancement in this disease is progressive over time. And it correlates with the amount of fibrosis that is there in myocardium. Hence, it corresponds to the decreasing cardiac performance. So I hope you understand more the fibrosis poor will be the left ventricular function and the uh, cardiac performance. So this is how MRI today is probably the mainstay for cardiac imaging in this disease because it is able to give us, uh, you know, the direct correlation with the symptomatology. 
so that is one of the messages that i wanted to give you through this video today so by now you have an idea we are looking at chagas disease and we are looking at a chronic case we had a history of the disease around 20 years back so i'll ask mamta to highlight and you know tell us what this disease is all about well thank you sir Uh, as sir rightly pointed uh, pointed out about the chronic implications of chagas uh, disease uh, we are dealing with uh, a 55 year old patient who presented in his childhood with unilateral swelling of the eye which is known as romana sign let us have a look at the romana sign this is uh, what is known as romana sign there is unilateral periorbital edema along with conjunctivitis and it occurs when the you know infective forms of this uh, parasite that is trypanosoma cruzi the causative agent of chagas disease uh, when the infective forms that is the trypomastigote forms penetrate the conjunctiva right so at that particular point of time uh, the trypomastigotes were identified in the uh, blood of the patient and um, keeping in mind uh, all those previous old reports today he presented to us with some abnormalities in the heart and regurgitation history so we have uh, reasons more than one to consider chronic chagas disease now chagas disease is caused by trypanosoma cruzi this is one of the important hemoflagellates which we uh, have amongst the protozoal uh, you know uh, protozoal parasites the other important one is leishmania you can remember this by remembering halt that is h for hemoflagellates a for nothing l for leishmania and t for trypanosoma now as sir rightly said trypanosoma although it's not prevalent in india but it's a favorite of indian examiners so we better uh, you know make ourselves aware of this disease and as far, we have got two important species trypanosoma brucei and cruzi and our next uh, few minutes of discussion are going to focus on trypanosoma cruzi now this is a vector borne disease uh, the vector being a uh, radovid bug which is also known as kissing bug because it usually bites on the face also known as assassin bug or triatomin bug now let us have a look at the uh, life cycle how how interesting it is the way you know it uh, it enters the human body the infective form as i already mentioned is the metacyclic trypomastigote as you can see over here now there are two uh, broad uh, morphological forms which you need to know one is the infective form for us humans that is the trypomastigote form and the other is the a mastigote form now what happens trypomastigote form is present in the body of the vector it is passed out in the feces um, of the vector and uh, during the process of biting uh, during the process of you know biting the human host uh, there's uh, you know uh, accumulation of trypomastigotes in the feces and while uh, rubbing the uh, uh, rubbing the area of the skin at the site of bite these trypomastigotes are inoculated into the human body right so this is one way it enters the human body and the other less important modes are mother to child during uh, pregnancy organ transplantation and very rarely uh, via intake of contaminated food and water now next we need to know which important cells in the human body does it invade it invades the reticular endothelial cells of liver spleen bone marrow and also the skeletal muscles cardiac muscles and the epidermal cells of the skin right once it invades these cells it transforms into the a mastigote forms as you can see the a masti masti means flagella a mastigote forms do not have flagella whereas trypomastigote forms as you can clearly see over here they have got a beautiful flagellated uh, appearance right so once the uh, trypomastigote enters the reticular endothelial cells it transforms into the a mastigote forms which in turn multiply and uh, we can uh, consider this infected cell carrying a lot of a mastigotes as uh, something which is known as a pseudocyst it is called a pseudocyst because it does not have a true membrane right so next uh, during the development process is the fact that uh, these a mastigote forms convert into the trypomastigote forms right and once the trypomastigote forms uh, are formed they are released out uh, following rupture of the cell into the blood now in the blood we have got broadly two kinds of trypomastigote forms the longer slender ones and the shorter or broad ones the longer slender ones are the you know are the ones which invade other cells of our body whereas the shorter and the broader more broad forms they are the ones which are picked up by the vector during the blood meal uh, please remember the trypomastigote forms are the non multiplicative forms of the parasites but they are flagellated whereas the a mastigote forms are the multiplying forms but they are a flagellated 
right so at this point of time if somebody if some if some vector bites this uh, human being who is carrying the trypanosomiasis forms in his or her blood stream the vector is going to pick up what the trypanosomiasis forms and in the body of the vector itself it will transform into the amastigot form in the foregut then it will multiply by binary fission and then it will change into the epimastigot form in the midgut and finally in the hindgut the the metacyclic trypanosomiasis forms are formed which in turn are infective for us and this completes the life cycle of this parasite now as far as symptomatology is concerned the incubation period uh, ranges from um, one week to two weeks and initially the patient will present with what is known as acute chagas disease now we need to know two important terms which we have deliberately highlighted uh, in purple chagoma and romana sign what is chagoma chagoma is an erythematous subcutaneous nodule which occurs at the site of bite by the vector it is painful and it usually resolves in 2 to 3 weeks now next important thing is romana sign which i have already told you about it is nothing but unilateral uh, uh, periorbital edema along with conjunctivitis with which our patient in this uh, clinical case uh, discussion had presented during his childhood now other than these two classical signs there can be generalized lymphadenopathy and hepatosplenomegaly because the predilection uh, for this parasite is the reticulo endothelial system that is liver spleen bone marrow and occasionally you can have seven myocarditis and neurological signs like meningoencephalitis as well now in majority of the cases uh, the acute phase uh, you know it the acute phase wanes off in uh, one to two months and very few patients end up with what is known as chronic chagas disease now it can present in different forms of which the most common one is the asymptomatic form or the indeterminate form uh, wherein the patient won't have any symptomatology at all you won't even think of chagas uh, you know chronic chagas disease now more common more com i mean less common and more worrisome forms include the cardiac form which occurs in about 30% of the infected patients and uh, the they, these patients present with dilated cardiomyopathy uh, because of which the patient can have dysphagia chest pain and rhythm disturbances like uh, right bundle branch block and thromboembolism less common form is gastrointestinal form uh, characterized by mega esophagus and mega colon uh, because of mega esophagus there can be regurgitation with which our patient presented uh, with and uh, mega colon uh, clinically can present as repeated episodes of abdominal pain right and uh, an even you know less common form is the pulmonary form which presents with uh, which presents like uh, repeated aspiration repeated uh, episodes of aspiration pneumonitis and this more commonly occurs during sleep and more commonly in children and mixed forms that is an am amalgamation of the above uh, said forms are seen in 10% of the patients like so they will our, present with our, our patient maybe we had both the cardiac and the gi form both were there so we had a classic uh, chronic mixed uh, form uh, i mean a presentation with the mixed features of the disease yeah. now a word about congenital trypanosomiasis now the parasite can cross the placenta during the acute much, uh, phase of the disease and even during the chronic phase of the disease although it's quite rare but this possibility uh, should be considered and uh, what effects it can have on the baby the baby can have low birth weight still birth and very very rarely myocarditis and neurological alterations now very very important uh, in hiv infected individuals now these uh, individuals are at a greater risk of reactivation of the underlying infection by this parasite and sadly they are more prone to develop meningoencephalitis now i would like to request sir over here to brief us uh, more about uh, uh, you know this particular uh, feature in hiv infected individuals now in hiv infected patients when you look at mri of this patient you look at this you will find a, a classic ring enhancing lesion with surrounding edema so uh, this is almost uh, similar to what we see in toxoplasmosis in a patient with hiv so uh, it is uh, important dd to be considered but the imaging alone will not be enough to differentiate between am i looking at a focal lesion in the brain because of uh, chagas disease or because of toxoplasma which is even more common in hiv so we are really not able to tell but if you have a patient from a endemic area which mm -hmm. is uh, the where you have a classic history like we had in our patient you you may keep it in mind 
but it is important to know that the radiological appearances are very similar to what we get in toxoplasmosis along with you have meningoencephalitis in this patient especially in hiv even the cardiac form may have a acute exacerbation exabor if you have if you have a chronic chagas then you have hiv so that it is also possible so it's very very important to you know correlate it with the, where the patient is hailing from the uh, endemicity is to be considered now moving on to the lab diagnosis uh, the peripheral blood microscopy detects trypomastigoid forms as you can see over here even our patients uh, review of blood reports revealed that trypomastigoid forms of trypanosoma cruzi were identified now a very important feature of these uh, you know uh, these forms which are seen in the peripheral blood smear is that these are about uh, 20 microns uh, in length and these are characteristically c shaped or u shaped and you can see a beautiful flag a beautiful flagella emanating uh, from the posterior end and uh, spanning uh, over the entire body as the undulating membrane and coming out from the anterior end right so the characteristic c or u shaped of trypomastigoid form tells you that it could be trypanosoma cruzi of course it has to be you know confirmed by doing other tests as well now next obviously this patient uh, uh, who presented to us uh, with the uh, symptomatology suggestive of chronic chagas disease we do not expect a positive peripheral blood smear for trypanosomiasis forms because these are seen only in the acute phase next culture is by far the most specific method of diagnosis as is true for most other microorganisms you can go for novi mcneil nicol medium or yagers liver infusion tryptose medium for culturing and what exactly uh, we look for in these culture media we look for the the mastigoid forms of the parasite right then antibody detection in the serum igm antibody detection will help you diagnose acute infection and congenital infection right but for chronic uh, ch uh, chronic disease that is chagas disease you have to demonstrate igg antibodies which were positive in our patient which we deliberately ordered because we knew that this patient had suffered initially 20 years back with acute chagas disease then antigen detection from serum and urine holds value in making a diagnosis of acute phase of the infection then uh, molecular methods like pcr are far more sensitive as compared to peripheral blood smear or you know antigen or antibody detection you can go for detecting detection of the kinetoplast dna or the you know um, nuclear dna of the organism and it is highly highly uh, you know sensitive because it can help you detect the presence of one single parasite per 20 ml of blood remember one sim single parasite per 20 ml of blood then animal inoculation uh, by intraperitoneal inoculation into mice you can collect the blood or cso csf of the patient and inoculate uh, into mice uh, the sample uh, intraperitoneally and subsequently you can examine the blood of the mice to look for the presence of trypanosomiasis forms of course this is just for the sake of completion of this slide this nobody does these days and then xeno diagnosis wherein uh, this again is not done uh, these days xeno means foreign in xeno diagnosis we basically deliberately uh, make the you know patient we expose the patient to the nymph forms of the vector and subsequently we detect the uh, we uh, the parasite in the feces of these uh, bugs right it sounds uh, quite uh, gross so we do not uh, do it these days this i've already shown you now this is these uh, this picture depicts the amastigoid forms uh, in the heart tissue stained by hematoxylin and uh, eosin stain as the arrow is beautifully showing the amastigoid forms then this is the indirect fluorescent antibody test showing the trypanosomiasis forms all those green green shiny things are nothing but the trypanosomiasis forms c or u shaped now as far as treatment is concerned you need to remember two important drugs uh, nifurtimox and benznidazole of which benznidazole is considered as the drug of choice in latin america where this infection is endemic these uh, drugs have got uh, more uh, value in treating the acute phase of the disease but sadly during chronic uh, phase these drugs do not help much and you just have to go with the symptomatic management of the patient Oh, I hope you enjoyed the discussion where we tried to look at the microbiology, pharmacology, disease uh, process as well as the radiological picture, and uh, I feel it is a, one of the most important diseases where the where the patient is coming from helped us 
in picking up the disease and we had classic the clinical signs and romana sign and all that Chilina. classics you know which are which are very classic you know you read them in the medical school but sometimes if you are not living in the endemic area you may not see these patients often but today people are traveling you know it's very important to realize that sometimes you know maybe two decades back three decades back you would say sir this disease is not happening in my country why should i study but you know people are traveling you know so when people travel they bring back diseases sometimes when you are, you don't even suspect and sometimes that travel might be in remote past like Definitely. in this patient you know uh, the the cause and the disease was in remote past but now he is coming with a, a cardiomyopathy kind of a picture and at that time it is very important to have a high degree of suspicion otherwise you know we would not have picked up the diagnosis and you know the igg antibody and the contrast enhanced mri were the main things in this patient to help us to zero down plus the barium study to look at the esophageal involvement as well plus you know a battery of tests which are available which you have already talked about here and i hope you know next time you see a question you should be able to pick up the keywords and this highlights you know the importance of looking at the keywords especially if you are a us mle aspirant you you know because you are looking at people from all geographies you know going to america so they, if they say in a question your patient coming from southern america or a latin american patient or a brazilian patient like we had in this patient you keep this in mind it's possible that you you know it is possible that maybe they are trying to give you a hint about chagas disease so that is a very very important message that we wanted to create through this video and i hope you enjoy this video if you do enjoy this video do write to us in the comment section do tell us if you want to you know highlight or you know make videos on any other topic of your interest please do follow us on dams edi channel on youtube and we are very proud to say we have approximately 100000 uh, followers today on the youtube channel alone and i'm sure you know this would uh, increase uh, by the time you know uh, you uh, you know i would request you to forward the link to other Definitely. people as well because we we put in a lot of effort in creating all this education all videos so i i hope you enjoy them we wish you all the best thank you thank you